Well, first of all, uh, thank you very much to Jack for inviting me here um, to speak tonight after the celebration of my election last night. I'm glad to say my hangover has just about abased enough that I am able to be here and speak, which is very good. Um, I'll be a bit boring and start with a short disclaimer and say that obviously what I'm voicing tonight are personal views as a member of the Labour Party not connected to the role that I'll be holding next year. <laughs> but I think that, to speak about what we think this debate is about, I think Rhea is absolutely right that New Labour does have things to offer. Clearly, New Labour was a phenomenally successful political project in many ways, both in the natural success and in some of the huge changes that we did see in Britain in that time. As a Labour Party member, I'm immensely proud of some of the achievements regarding child poverty, the achievements regarding the NHS. And one of my favourite things to do, if I'm a bit sad, is to click on YouTube and watch that Gordon Brown speech that lists New Labour achievements. I know Joe is nothing because he's not many times probably almost said it's sad recently. But, um, I think, but I think that you can think that, and you can think that New Labour did a lot of great things, but you can also think that it's time for the Labour Party to move on. That in order to build success in the future, in order to inspire people, in order to move forward, we're actually much better at looking forward rather than looking back and trying to recreate the New Labour project, and that's what I'm going to be arguing today. Because the problem is, if you're looking back in 2018, trying to remake and rebuild what happened in that Labour landslide in 1997, what are you almost assuming when you say we can look back and just recreate the political success that happened in its own context, not in a vacuum? You're almost assuming that politics is static. You're assuming that you can go back and that you can recreate this thing that happened in a particular place at a particular time. This goes not just for the Labour Party and New Labour, this counts for all political parties and all political movements. Is that you just can't really do this. Because politics isn't static, society isn't static. Politics, um, you know, society, the economy is changing all the time. Public opinion shifts, economies grow and economies decline. And that means that the context we're in today, in 2018, is simply not the same as the context we were in in 19. 97. And this means that I think trying to go back to New Labour is just not the way the Labour Party should be trying to move forward. And trying to remake that success is not what we should be trying to do as a party and as a political movement. So what has changed between 1997 and 2018? We've had things like Brexit. You know, at the time we did see a lot of economic growth and you know, we did see a lot of success. But there are a huge number of people that are feeling that that consensus, that the consensus that New Labour largely accommodated, that was formed by Thatcher post-1979, post around a more uh, free market and neoliberal economic system, is something that a lot of people think has failed. Them, and that a lot of people have good reasons to think has failed. Them, with stagnating wages, with insecure employment like zero hours contracts on the rise, from a Labour perspective, because of that trade union membership, absolutely plummeting down a quarter of a million people last year. There are many people who I think want to see more than just small changes within the, with the broader framework being left largely untouched. People that actually want to have a desire to actually see a more transformational change. And also the fact is that I think we have an opportunity at the moment to actually drive for that kind of bigger and more ambitious change. I had a very interesting talk actually the other week by Maurice Kalaskin, who is one of the academic thinkers behind uh, Blue Labour. And he, he, he described it in this very you know, ac academia style way, a lot of flowering language, that we feel he thinks we're in an interregnum, which is um, basically a, t a period of time when there is a chance to forge new consensus. There's a chance to almost bring forward new, new ideas in the sense that the, the 1945 Attlee government was able to do that in the way that Thatcher was able to do in 1979. They were in a situation where Labour and the Conservatives sort of locked on around 40% in the polls, where there is a lot of people that are voicing dissatisfaction with our society and with kind of the established way of doing things that has existed for many decades. And I think there is a chance, if the left takes it, to be able to present a real alternative, and to be able to actually present a programme and a vision which provides the answers to a lot of these questions and anxieties that people have. But I don't believe that we can do that by almost going to some form of retreat and saying we want to go back to 1997. And I don't think that's what Paul wants. And I don't think that is necessarily what is going to work given the context um, that, we are now, uh, that we are now in. I think that like 
Jeanette is absolutely right when she talked about Jeremy Corbyn in the 2017 election as providing some basis of evidence for this. That you know, people within the Labour Party and also the public showed desire they were willing to actually vote for someone, they were willing to turn out in much bigger numbers than any of the political commentary or than I expected for what was a bolder and more radical vision and what was someone that was being honest about the need not just to manage things better, not just to work within that post-79 framework, but to really challenge the conventional way that people thought about things. I think that's what we should be looking to do as the, as the Labour Party. So that's the thing we can learn from New Labour. Absolutely. I think that in terms of being the core of driving what we want to do as a party going forward, New Labour fails to really provide the answers. So I think that, and this comes back to what we should be looking to do as a party in the political movement. And there are people who are being let down by the current deal. And, I'm not, and clearly, a Labour government following a new Labour ethos would, in my opinion, be far better than the current government and would bring about massively positive changes. But the problem is we look at the new Labour record. A lot of that change wasn't so deep-seated. A lot of that change was quite easy to be reversed by, by the coalition government and this government, which would which come after it. I think that a lot of the people that our party and our movement wants to serve actually deserve and want more far-reaching more far-reaching change than that, and change that is going to last so we can, we can forge like, this new paradigm and a new consensus. So I think that we should be looking actually to challenge sort of the broad economic system which has prevailed around sort of free markets and neoliberalism. That we shouldn't be afraid to propose things like the nationalisation of some industries, which actually public polling shows is very popular. That we shouldn't be afraid to say actually we should um, regulate the financial markets a lot more tightly. We should look at things like cooperatives and we should try and look to reinvigorate the trade union movement. I think there's things that Labour should be saying. I think we're in a context now where we can challenge that in a way that was very different to the context that we were in in 1997. I think that at this point of transition, where there is a chance, people are unsure, there's a chance actually to not just try and accommodate what you think the public are thinking and what you think is kind of seen as the centre ground but to actually try and inspire people and try and take people with you on, on, on a journey and actually try to provide new solutions to the challenges which, which have arisen. I think 2017 was a good start for that and was an indicator of where Labour can go as a party. It wasn't perfect, but there's much we need to look. And we can learn a lot from the time that Labour has had success in government, which is what the Labour Party should, should be about. But also let's think... What happened to those many social democratic parties across Europe that didn't really deviate or didn't really change much from the, th from the third way? Well, look at it in Germany, in the recent election, the social democrats were down to 15% of the vote. In France, they were merely like an entertaining sideshow in a presidential election that completely bypassed it. And these are largely, a lot of these are parties that have stuck a lot closer to the doctrine of the third way. And that was adopted by, by New Labour. I think that actually what that shows is that people aren't enthused by that message anymore. They were in 1997. But times have changed, things have moved on, and people want us to go further. And that's what I think the Labour Party must do. So I think that what we need to do as a Labour Party is rather than looking back, sort of remake past success. We should be proud of that, yes. But we should also realise that people want and deserve more. That we can challenge consensus and there is an opportunity to forge a new consensus if the left takes the opportunity if we have the, the bravery to do it and that's why I think that new labor ultimately is largely dead and, and does not provide the answers moving forward for the left or for the Labour Party in the UK and that's why I'd ask you to vote for this motion thank you <laughs>